Yo, fellas, it's Henry and Motors and Blowers. Good morning. Kind of one of those misty May mornings, and it's about 55. So it's comfortable, but it's even more comfortable with a nice snuggy jacket. You know what I mean? Anyway, I thought I'd come out today and kind of work on this. I'll let you know what happened ever since I uh, got it listed. I just took a picture of it looking like this. I wrote 775. <laughs> hey, you guys said that it's summertime, whatever, springtime, and it's going to be very popular. Not one guy lowered it to 675. Not one guy lowered it to 575. Not one guy lowered it to 475. Not one guy lowered it to 425. One guy on Craigslist emailed me and said, that's kind of rough. I'll give you 250. And I'm thinking to myself, I sold the smaller one for 250. This has got to get like 350, 450, right? So I says, come up to 350 and we'll have a deal. He never responded. So ever since then, I just let it sit in my garage and didn't really think much of it and just thinking to myself, what the hell am I going to do with this thing? You know what I mean? I certainly don't need it. Uh, there was a little bit of an oil leak that I noticed because it was dripping, dripping, dripping. So I thought it was all that penetrating oil that I sprayed around there to loosen up the linkage. It might have been that. But then if you know that this engine has two oil reservoir fill caps, one on this side, uh, one on this side, one on that side, right? Well, this side I you know, just added oil, whatever, you know, so I knew it was good. I went on the inner one, the one where you can't even access it's between this, the belt and the gas tank, and you can't even reach it, you know, it was loose. So I had to grab one of those long forceps, whatever, and big screwdriver and just, you know, tightened it. So I think that fixed the oil leak. In the meantime, I sprayed super clean all over the place just to get the oil out of the way. And, uh, I think I'm gonna might I might try to get this looking better. That might draw some more attention, you know. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a quick overview here. Like I said, I sprayed super clean all around here because oil was just like packed up in there, you know. And that super clean loosens up all the grease and the oil, and I'll spray it down later. This part of it looks okay. As you know, we put uh, tubes in here, and it's holding up really well. That's the part where I had to uh, tighten the um, oil reservoir. It's a pretty good area where you can build up a lot of oil because it's completely horizontal, you know? That part's okay. But the part that's gray, it's a lot of rust, surface rust, you know? Not rot, just surface rust. So a little coat of paint over it should make it look much better worst part of it here is that obviously this was left outside as you can see that rusty chip paint on here really makes it look ugly you know really makes it look worn you know i gotta try to do something about that because that will appeal to more people if this wasn't there and maybe just a coat of paint over the parts that are gray I really don't care about the name Craftsman. People know that there's only certain amounts of manufacturers who make this damn thing, especially the ones that look like this, so they know it's a Craftsman. This says uh, Counter Roto. I don't even know what that says. So I'm going to grind off the rust here, kind of wipe down or get one of those scrapers and just scrape off the excess rust there and go into my box of paint and see what color paint that I have close to that. So I've got my drill with one of these things on it. Just going to see how, how good it works. So that seems to work okay. I'm just going to do that throughout the whole thing. Obviously when I do it, the, the writing here where it says five horsepower, that's gonna be gone, but honestly, you don't really need that. So 
So that seems to work pretty well. Doesn't look too bad already. I've grinded it down pretty good. Got some uh, 99 cent was now a dollar or something or other paint. Just gonna go over this uh, part a little bit. Try not to do the sticker. By the way, guys, I wanted to mention I've been an IndyCar fan my whole life. And uh, believe it or not, I'm actually going to satisfy a bucket list thing this year. Uh, I've been watching the Indy 500 since I was a little kid. Never missed it on TV. There was a few times where, you know, um, I had to, in those days, videotape it. But I've never missed it. I've always watched it. Whether I had it recorded or whatever. And I said to myself... One day, I have a bucket list, right? I'll go to the Super Bowl. One day, my brother actually uh, had tickets to the Rams this year, but I didn't really want to spend $8,000 on it, you know, plus airfare. So I didn't go. He uh, took his son, which is what he should do, right? Um, I've been to the World Series. I went to the 2015 uh, Game 5 Mets versus Royals. So that's one part of the bucket list that I satisfied. It was great. And it was in my backyard, you know? Flushing Queens. So that was all good. So this year I decided I am going to go with my brother to the Indianapolis 500 on May 29th. So I'm leaving in a, in a day. I'm driving by myself. My brother's gonna meet me in Indy. We've got hotel and all that, tickets. So that should be a fun time. Uh, you guys don't have to watch, of course, if you're not into it, but I'm gonna be videotaping my experience. Going there, driving there, and uh, some clips of the race. But I'm not gonna record everything in the race because you can just watch it on TV, you know? <laughs> Anyway, wanted to get it out there. Um, I'm 53 already. Gonna try to satisfy some bucket list items, you know, because you don't know how much more longer you have. Uh, I've had friends my age, even younger than me, who have passed away, whether it's from cancer or COVID or whatever. It's always something, right? So life is too short, fellers. Gotta do something, just do it. Driving to Indy is probably not convenient, but you know what? I look at it as an adventure, you know what I mean? I know you know what I mean. Isn't that starting to look really good already? Just from talking to you. Gonna have to find some kind of a light color for, for the panels. That's starting to look really good. It's rather satisfying actually to 
to do this because, I mean, what a world of difference, you know? Hey. That's pretty good. Okay, it uh, started raining again, so I had to move it inside. I had a <laughs> quarter can of the sandstone. Uh, I figured it was closest to the gray. I didn't have anything else. So I just went over it really quick. I covered up the black parts uh, real quick with some cardboard and uh, just sprayed it real quick. That nozzle was super fast, you know what I mean? So once I pressed it, it was like coming out really fast. So I had some drips and stuff. But look, as long as it covers up the... Uh I also painted the uh, wheels black. It looks way better, man. So maybe I'll take uh, pictures of this now and uh, well, when it dries and then uh, put it on the lawn and take pictures of that too. And then maybe I'll get more than 475 <laughs> or 450. Actually, at this moment, uh, I would give it away for 250. So maybe I should call that guy back. See you guys next, next time, time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowersandblowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.